Yo, what's going on guys? Today, Mayhem 2.0 got released. I'm going to be breaking down exactly uh, like how Mayhem 2.0 works and exactly how to use the Mayhem 2.0 menu. Um, also, I'm going to be breaking down the 29 brand new modifiers that I found. Um, hopefully, I didn't miss one. I flipped through the different modifiers like dozens of times and I got pictures of them all and we're going to break them all down. Now, uh, before we get into the video, if you could drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel, that would really help me out. Um, and yeah, let's just get straight into the video, though. So basically, you guys just watched a Mayhem 6 Grave Ward kill with all of my gear from yesterday. I have not re-geared at all. I've barely been boss farming. So if you guys want to hop somewhere, like, into a comfortable spot where you could start farming again, Mayhem 6 is a good spot. Otherwise, it does seem like Mayhem 4 is very similar to the same, uh, like, power level of enemies as yesterday, pretty much, because we didn't have Mayhem 2.0 yesterday. So if you want similar difficulty, then hop into Mayhem 4 right now. It seems very similar. Um, and you can hop into Mayhem 6. As you guys saw, I got a pretty simple boss kill with a hyper focus. And um, yeah. So the first thing we should also mention is Mayhem 6 gear. Here is a Mayhem 6 Maggie that I got from Killing Grave Ward a bit earlier. And um, I also have a Mayhem 6 Lob. Now, these are just higher stats, as you can see. There's nothing identifying this as a Mayhem 6 weapon. The old lob did about 12k damage, and this one now does almost 20k damage. Um, and this is just Mayhem 6. Mayhem 10 will be even further beyond this. Now, this only seems to drop from enemies that you kill. No vending machines, no chests. Hopefully, Gearbox adds at least chests um, in the future because there's no point of playing of getting chests in Mayhem 10 right now, it seems like. And um, yeah, so now let's go over exactly how the new Mayhem system works. And basically, uh, the reroll system, which is very amazing. I love that we can reroll modifiers. Now, I just want to pull up this little chart. Gearbox put this out in a hotfix yesterday, and it is exactly how Mayhem works. Now, like I said, there are 29 new modifiers. Each of these are split into four different categories. Easy, medium, hard, and very hard. So as you guys can see from the chart, it says Mayhem level one, we have one easy modifier. Mayhem level two, we have an easy and medium modifier. Mayhem level three, easy, medium, medium. Mayhem 4, easy, hard. Mayhem 5, easy, medium, hard, and so on, all the way up to Mayhem 10, where we get an easy, medium, hard, and very hard modifiers. Um, all four modifiers, pretty much. Now, basically, how the reroll system works is you can reroll your modifiers. And if you see a modifier you don't like, you can just completely reroll it. Now, um, I just got to point this out to you guys because there are going to be modifiers you don't like. Like a lot of people aren't going to like the Speed Demon one. A lot of people aren't going to like Big Kick Energy. A lot of people aren't going to like uh, Galaxy Brain. And we're going to go through each of these modifiers. I flipped through. I re-rolled on all of the Mayhem levels for like, you know, a long time. And I got pictures of them all. We're going to go over each of them. Let me just toss on some background footage. And um, hey, look, I'm down. That's funny. Anyways, let's just go over the modifiers. So first, we have the easy modifiers. There are six of these, I believe. Let me count real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six of these. Let's just go over them, and I'll give you my thoughts on each, but we're going to go through all of the modifiers super quickly. So for easy, we have Speed Demon. Who needs cars when you've got kills? After killing an enemy, movement speed is increased by 50% for 10 seconds. This effect can stack up to three times. Now, like I said, some people are going to hate this. This looks like it can give you 150% movement speed. Now, I haven't done it yet, but I am going to test if this gives us more damage on Zane with Violent Momentum and Amara with her driver. This seems like crazy bonus damage if it does. Um, so I'm pretty excited for it, but I understand a lot of people aren't going to like it. Let's move on. Next, we've got Loot Explosion. Now, this is going to be a fan favorite Killing an enemy has a 10% chance to cause a loot explosion. Critical kills guarantee an enemy will loot explode. So that's going to be real fun. We get lots of loot if we score critical shots and kill an enemy with it. Um, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Let's keep going. Big kick energy. Gun damage is increased by 25%. But recoil and weapon spread are also increased by 20 or 100%. 
Um, it's going to be a bumpy ride. So this is going to give you crazy recoil and crazy weapon spread, but you get 25% damage out of it. Now, you can use some pretty cool weapons like the Scourge is, in, is just homes in on enemies. So you're just going to get the gun damage out of it. And um, yeah. Next, we've got more than okay, Boomer. Grenade damage is increased by 25%. Additionally, enemies might drop a grenade ammo or they might drop a live grenade. Um, and yeah, that's the modifier. This one looks really fun for grenade builds. We also want to see more grenade buffs going forward with Mayhem 2.0. Um, I honestly think Gearbox will give it to us. I think they were just giving us the update or like the weapon buffs and stuff and the Iron Bear buffs we got. We're, I think we're going to see more of that as the game progresses, so don't worry about that. Anyways, let's keep going. We've got Slayer, non-boss enemies below 15% total armor, shield, and health will have a blue glow, and they will explode into shield and health boosters if damaged by melee. So to me, this is going to be one of the kind of indifferent modifiers where I'm going to roll this one and be like, all right, I don't have to worry about any of the other annoying ones. But um, yeah, so this will also help you if you do need more health and shields, whatever. Um, let's keep going, though. Finally, for the easy modifiers, we've got Galaxy Brain. Enemy, enemy head size is increased by 100%. You know what that means, easier crits. Unless you're farming Grave Ward, I ran into Grave Ward earlier with Big Head, and he completely covered up his middle crit spot. Some people are going to love this, some people are going to hate this. It's going to be really useful in some situations as well, but also not. Like against Malawan backpacks, they're just going to have bigger heads, but their backpacks are the crit spots. Um, and yeah, so that's a fun one. But um, I get some people are going to turn it off. Let's move on to the medium modifiers. Now, there are actually 10 medium modifiers. So this one has the most um, modifier choices total. Let's go over them. First, we've got the floor is lava. While in combat, standing still will cause an incendiary damage pool to form underneath you. Um, now, I can tell you guys from getting this modifier already, the incendiary pool actually does a lot of damage. Um, you can take a lot of damage from this modifier. So a lot of people I can see are going to be turning this off. This is going to be pretty annoying for some of the mayhem modes. Like there are some mayhem modes that roll two medium modifiers. It's going to be pretty annoying to try to skip through this. But it's also kind of fun and kind of exciting. Um, a lot of you who just want to jump into the game and find a cool way to play, this will be interesting. So honestly, give this one a chance. But um, yeah. Next, we've got Mob Mentality. Break it up, break it up. Enemy damage and fire rate is increased by 30% while near other enemies. So this is going to be a cool way that enemies can get a buff for getting near each other, and you're going to have to watch out when they do. Next, we've got freeze tag. Shoot to chill. Enemies may leave a cryo orb upon death. Cryo orbs constantly release cryo novas and are slowed when damaged. So this is going to be an annoying one for me. I hate cryo. But it seems like you can also uh, get other enemies covered in cryo, so you can slow them down too, um, and that's pretty cool. Next, we've got chilling them softly. Enemies may be infused with cryo. Um, infused enemies are immune to cryo damage and release a cryo nova when killed. Once again, another annoying modifier for me. I honestly just don't like cryo damage or being slowed down, really. Um, I'm more of a speed demon kind of dude, but this will be cool for some of you guys. Next, we've got high voltage. Enemies may be infused with shock. Enemies infused with shock are immune to shock, and they may deal a shock nova when killed. So this is just like the uh, cryo one. And there's actually one for every single element. Um, that is acid rain. Enemies are immune to corrosive, and they might may also deal a corrosive nova. Totally radical. Enemies are immune to radiation. Infused enemies deal a radiation nova. Charred mode, enemies may be infused with incendiary, and so on. And finally, um, actually that looks like all of them. But yeah, one for each of the elements. Um, basically, enemies can be in, um, infused and immune to any one of the elements, and they can deal that elemental nova on their death. So yeah, let's move on. Next, we've got pain tolerance. This one I actually noticed while bossing with the hyperfocused. When damaged, enemies gain 3% damage reduction against the type of damage they received for 3 seconds. This effect can stack up to 20 times. Now, like I said, I actually noticed this immediately with the hyperfocus. I was getting like 
one third of the damage. Um, depending on what weapon you're using, you will notice this modifier a lot or not at all. And um, yeah. And finally, we have Healy Avenger. Enemies have a chance upon death to release a power up that will heal the first enemy it touches or drop health and shield boosters if destroyed. Now, this one actually seems interesting and fun to me. Um, this means every time you kill an enemy, they can power up an enemy nearby, or they might just drop boosters for you to power up. So I kind of like um, modifiers like this one, and not really ones that mess around with damage too much. Um, unless Speed Demon gives us damage with Violent Momentum, then that would be really cool. And um, yeah, so let's just move on. Next, we have the hard modifiers. There are six of these. Um, and we're gonna go over them. First, we've got Laser Fair. Enemies have a small chance to drop a Spinner Trap when damaged. Spinners project a rotating elemental laser beam. Now, this sounds sick. Um, basically, what it's gonna do is just add another way that you're taking damage on the battlefield. Um, it'll kind of just get through your health gating and stuff like that. It'll be really interesting to see how this uh, pans out when I actually get this modifier. And um, yeah, next we've got ticked off status effect damage against enemies is reduced by 90%. Malawan's not going to like this. So um, this seems really interesting. Um, th the fact it says Malawan's not going to like this, it seems like there might be a chance that status um, damage that we take is also reduced, but it does just say against enemies. I'm not exactly sure how this one works, to be honest with you guys, so I'll just read it to you and let's just move on. Next, we have Chain Gang. Can you feel the connection? Nearby enemies are attached by a damaging elemental beam. Um, this is going to be really interesting. A lot of these hard ones are very unique, and I'm not really sure how this one's going to work either. It sounds like um, either we're going to have to avoid this beam ourselves so we don't get damaged by it, Otherwise, are our guns going to get turned into a Brainstormer? I actually have to go try this one out. It could go either way. But um, yeah, let's move on. Next, we've got Pool Party. Enemies drop Corrosive, Shock, or Incendiary Pools when their armor, shields, or health are depleted. Come on in, the water's fine. Uh, this is just going to put Elemental Pools across the battlefield everywhere. Once again, just increasing the damage you take in general. This one seems pretty interesting, but um, yeah. Next, we've got boundary issues. At close range, enemies will attach a damaging elemental beam to you. Like a secondhand goldfish, it's best not to get too attached. Now, this is once again just another way on the battlefield that you're going to be taking damage. It's going to be stuff you're going to have to think about. You know, don't get too close to enemies. If you want to keep full shields all the time, or if you want to say stay st topped up on health, um, it sounds interesting. And finally, this is one I actually like a lot. Enemies have a chance to spawn with a healing drone. If the enemy's killed, the healing drone will find a new target. Um, these ones seem interesting to me because th this is like how to power up the enemies without just giving them uh, more health or armor or like more damage. You know what I mean? So I kind of like unique ones like this, even though this literally just heals enemies. So it kind of is just making them spongier. But um, I, I like the idea of it and I like the direction they're going in with it. Finally, we are on to the very hard modifiers. Now, there are actually seven very hard modifiers, and they are pretty cool. Um, actually, I apologize. There's only six. I put the same one on top twice. We're just going to ignore that. And that first one is post-mortem. Killing an enemy has a chance to release um, death, which follows after you. If death touches you, you instantly enter fight for your life. Wow. So this is actually my first reaction to this one. This sounds like there's literally going to be a uh, death. Maybe an animation of a ghost, kind of like the skulls, but it'll instantly put you into fight for your life. Wow, that definitely sounds very hard. And I imagine it'll go away after a while. Like, you just have to avoid it. Because um, it would seem stupid if it didn't time out after 10 seconds or so. So, yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. Um... Wow. Next, let's move on to Rogue Light. You no longer enter fight for your life before dying. All enemies drop insta-health upon death. Good luck. 
So it sounds like enemies, when you kill an enemy, they will drop insta-health. I'm guessing maybe that's a booster. Um, I'm guessing when enemies die, your health gets filled up, but you no longer enter fight for your life. So that sounds very cool. That sounds like a good uh, flak modifier. <laughs> but um, just kidding. But um, yeah, so let's keep going. Next, we've got the buddy system. Enemies may be supported by an invulnerability drone, which grants immunity to all damage until it is destroyed. So this gives enemies you're mobbing against um, immunity phases. Hopefully you can actually get these drones with like brainstormers and redistributors. Hopefully we can just chain damage them. Otherwise, I can actually see a weapon like the Kill-A-Wisp working out very well. Maybe it can damage these drones as well as the enemies. And um, yeah. Next, we've got Holy Crit. Um, critical hit damage is increased by 25%, but non-crit is uh, reduced by 50. Now, I like this modifier a lot. I can hit crits just fine. Um, hopefully, you guys can too. Also, if you're playing uh, Flak, you got Megavore. So this is a pretty cool modifier. It just seems like free damage. And um, yeah, let's keep going. Next, we've got Not the Face. And I already read this one. I hate this one. Critical hit damage is reduced by 75%. Some people are just hard-headed. I'm just going to re-roll this one. I'm sorry, guys. But like, come on, don't take our crit damage away. And um, yeah, let's move on. Finally, we've got dazed and infused. Enemies may be infused with a random element. Infused enemies are immune to that type of damage and release a Nova when killed. So this is kind of like the media modifier, but it just gives enemies a random element. Um, this will be kind of annoying with media modifiers because you can get very hard and medium if you're on a couple of the mayhem levels. But um, yeah, so lots of immunity between different elements between these modifiers. Um, it is kind of interesting to see what Gearbox gave us for Mayhem 2.0. I like a lot of these modifiers. I dislike some of them. What's great is we can re-roll. So we can get the perfect mayhem experience for what we want to experience. And um, there you guys go. So that is all the mayhem modifiers. That is all of mayhem mode explained. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. Also post any questions if you have any. We still have to figure out a lot of stuff. So uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel. That's pretty much it from me, guys. I'll be posting more videos today and um, stay tuned. Anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next one. I'm out.